Hi, I'm Dee Stevenson from Venice, Florida. I'm an ophthalmologist, uh, CEO, CFO, chief bottle washer at Stevenson Eye Associates, and I have been in practice for 28 years. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is, is you know, we as we're learning about ophthalmology and surgical procedures, we have to decide, you know, what kind of implants we're going to use. Um, and, and what one fits best in our hands. And, you know, it's easy for me to sit up here and tell you uh, this is how to do this and this is how to do that. But the, th the thing I like to tell residents and students is always you need to find something that works in your hands, learn how to use it and learn how to use it well, know what your outcomes are and learn how to perfect it. When I'm doing surgery, I do a 1.8. I'm a mixed surgeon. I actually don't do on-axis surgery. I'm a 12 o'clock surgeon just because that's what I like to do. Um, making a capsulotomy here, I try to make it about five and a half millimeters, 5.25 to 5 millimeters um, in diameter. Um, I use a free form, make it with a cystotome. You can use a utrata forceps. Um, there's some other uh, procedures that you can do that are all manual. Of course, there's Femto, and I'll show and share with that you with those um, capsulotomies and techniques um, shortly. If we go a little, um, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit, and... Um, so we can get to um, the implants. Um, again, I'm just showing you in real fast motion here just the capsulotomy, the hydrodissection and hydrodelineation that occurs um, after the cataract, after you've uh, done the capsulotomy. And I do a divide and conquer technique. I still to this day do a divide and conquer technique. I have to give that credit to Dr. Harry Grabo who taught me when I went in private practice 28 years ago. Once INA is performed, I think it's very important that we polish our capsule for any kind of implant that you use. And I use a capsule polisher that is diamond dusted and I try to dust the posterior capsule as well, well as the anterior leaflets. The lens I'm gonna show you here is the LI61AO. It's an aspheric lens and it has to be, your, your incision has to be enlarged to 2.8. It's an in inserter that I call, it's an inserter, not an injector because you can stop it at any time. So I'm opening the wound here um, to 2.8 with a metal blade. And the inserter is um, really nice because it kind of blossoms and the lens comes out in a planar fashion. So I'm going to just show you the LI61AO. And it comes out, I put the leading haptic in the bag and then just rotate it and pronate it and drop the um, trailing haptic into the bag and remove the viscoelastic both in front and behind the lens. This lens, uh, this lens is um, been on the market for a very long time, and it's very uh, uh, reliable, um, uh, refractive-wise. Uh, Post-operatively, there are really no ever any surprises. Um, but it's a very nice lens to learn on because it is so um, predictable in the bag. Predictable. You can put this lens also. It's three piece. You can put it in the sulcus. You can capture the optic. So there's a lot of uh, things that you can do with this one particular IOL. So this for many years was my go-to lens. However, it is a silicone lens, but it is an aspheric optic. So it's a very, very nice lens and very stable in the eye. Thank you very much. That was the video on insertion of the LI61AO. I wish you good luck um, and enjoy the good outcomes you'll get with this lens. Thank you.